All right, let's continue back on. And so um, what I was gonna say is, uh, again, for the hinge flap, I was using uh, number two servo mounting screws and for the servo mounting plate and the servo itself, I'm using number three. So I'm drilling pilot holes with a 332nd bit, uh, just a slight, uh, slight increase in the drill bit uh, for the increased uh, servo mounting screw size uh, in a hardwood. So now that we have the servo itself mounted, just mounting the servo mounting bracket and we'll be done here. This is gonna be very similar, so again, this is sped up, but uh, again, just really quickly notice my little trick to pull, use the tape to pull these things out uh, before they're mounted. Here's that Futaba BLS-175 SV. That's the old version of the, uh, before they came out with the S-Bus 2. Um, but still, it's still a bad boy servo. And what's what's interesting is I, I programmed these and totally didn't have that out, obviously, because you watched me pull that uh, mounting bracket out, but uh, programmed it the wrong way. So I'm gonna have to go back and reprogram that. And uh, now that I have the, have the arm face the right way, we'll go through the same process and get this guy mounted. Again, since we're using the number three servo mounting screws, uh, I'll be drilling the pilot holes with a uh, 332 bit. There's that blue tape, kind of annoying. You couldn't see it before, but maybe I'll put it on there a little bit better next time. And again, if uh, you didn't watch the first video, I know this was awkward watching me kind of hold this out in front of me and not really bracing anything, but I wanted to get the drilling uh, in on in the shot. So normally I wouldn't be, obviously I wouldn't be doing this over the wing. So all of the sawdust just falls onto the wing, but just an effort to kind of show you what I'm doing. Uh, it's a little bit different, but. And again, just poking uh, pilot holes into the covering from behind to mount the servo bracket. And actually, this time I noticed um, I'm going to drill pilot holes. Um, again, we're doing servo stuff, so we're using number three screws. I'm going to be uh, just, I think it's probably better. So I'm doing a pilot hole at, uh, with a 1 16th bit, and then I'll go to the 3 32nd bit. So you'll see me go through these holes twice. I should have done that uh, before. I think this is probably a little bit cleaner. And just installing the number three servo mount screws from RTL fasteners. Poof, they're gone. Yep, so just a quick cut here. Now we're gonna go through all of these servo holes and um, reinforce them with uh, thin CA. So I love using these really long nozzles here. Uh, kind of want it done, use them and throw away. Make sure, please put those on tight um, uh, or else they will fall off and you'll have CA over everything. But what we're doing is putting two, one, two or three uh, drips of CA around these holes. Uh, so it hardens up not only the hole, but the threads uh, that you that were developed when you put the screw through and you know the hardwood itself So we'll do the same thing with the servo brackets one or two drips around each hole that will soak in To the wood and the threads 
just good practice to strengthen those holes. And we'll do the other, the other bracket. All right, so uh, if uh, you looked really closely in the pictures, uh, either from Siegel or the ones at the beginning of uh, episode one, uh, they're the same. Uh, you can notice it looks like they used the pre-production version where the horns were not painted. Uh, so the version that I got, and I assume when they decide to go to production and make the final changes and things, they did paint the horns. So you're going to need to get the paint off uh, it's good practice anyway, even if they're not painted, to kind of scuff up the areas that will be glued or epoxied in. So that's what you can see me doing uh, right now. Love this sanding block. This thing's awesome. And it actually works out well because it's smooth and you can kind of place the item exactly uh, where you want it and run your finger on the smooth metal side and it slides up and down really nicely. So uh, those sanding blocks are sweet. So we're done with the flaps, uh, flap horn, and now we're off to the aileron horn. Now they are different. It shows them clearly in the manual. Um, the taller one is for the flap, and the shorter one is for the aileron. And you can tell the goal is uh, you can see uh, where the push rod connects. That uh, is right over the hinge line in both of these. So uh, it would look weird if you mixed them up, but you can mix them up, so just be careful. So now we're preparing the CA hinges for the aileron. I take them all out and I loosely fold them over just so I can kind of establish that halfway line and then put the pin through and go ahead and put them in the wing for now. We'll take them out and put them in the aileron uh, when, we, when we install it. But uh, again, just a light fold just to find the center part, put that pin in and put it back in the wing for when we're ready for it. Oh, dropped it. And so uh, for all of mine, I needed to kind of carve out a little bit to get these horns to go in pretty well. Uh, I, skipped, uh, I skipped around that for this video, but uh, be aware you might have to go in and uh, chisel a little bit out to get those to fit in. And uh, it's just, uh, there's a lot of layers in both surfaces and you just have to, it's a very common thing you gotta do. So here's my Scotch Weld 420. Love this stuff for epoxy. This is what I always use. Love these guns. A lot of people use the high saw. That's great too. I've just uh, always been a Scotch Weld guy. So get a little dab out there and I have some little wooden mixing sticks that I just manually put this down on some wax paper and mix it, get the nice uh, consistency going. If you notice right by <clears throat> on the outside of my right hand, there is another mixing stick and there's two toothpicks uh, because after uh, we're kind of gluing everything, uh, you'll see what we use the toothpicks for. My man Jeff Williams from Team Extreme Flight showed me the, the toothpick method with epoxy and uh, you'll see me do it here in a second and I'll walk you through it. So here I'm putting uh, the epoxy on uh, the flap horn and it's going to go over that whole thing but I'm really concentrating on the bottom because when you slide it in the first time it's going to cover uh, it's going to coat the whole surface and uh, the first time is just to kind of start start the coating so so we put that in make sure it's fitting it's where you kind of want it that you're not going to have problems here and so I'm going to pull it out and so now that we've uh, kind of coated it a little bit I'm going to set the horn down and here's where I'm going to grab the toothpick and I kind of roll it to get a dollop on there and kind of work manually work that epoxy in the hole for the horn uh, so just kind of graze it through while twisting it and you get a nice little ball of epoxy on there and this way uh, the toothpick is small enough that you can go in there and really coat the insides of that uh, slot and so now we've coated it we got it in there and the cool thing with the perestroika flaps is the bottom is not covered it's wide open and in fact you can see clearly uh, where that uh, horn comes to rest in between those two formers so uh, 
take this opportunity to kind of fill in some epoxy down there around that horn. And it's kind of funny, uh, I put it down not on the wax paper. So uh, later on, <laughs> when I'm done filming this segment, I uh, had a big mess of epoxy underneath where you see the flap sitting right now. So make sure to have a place to put it. So we're working on the aileron horn right now. Same process as before, speed this up a little bit. First, get the initial set in there, use a toothpick, get those little balls to really work it around in there. And I put uh, a little bit extra in there because I can't get to it under from underneath like the flap. I use another toothpick. I always have one ready to go in case I need it, but uh, I want to really get a nice little filament here on both sides. Um, it kind of established a, a pretty good uh, seam on the flap horn, uh, but that's what you see me doing right here. There, on the wax paper. Good job. All right, so we're gonna let this sit for 24 hours uh, just to be safe. And now the last step of uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do some CA hinging on the aileron. So I found it easier to take those out and manually put them into the aileron themselves. And again, you push it in, and if you don't know, uh, I'll just explain it to you. The reason I put those pins in there, and it's a very common practice, is to make sure that you're getting half of that CA hinge in both the surface and the wing. Uh, so it's just an easy way to make sure you're getting half and half, uh, because you make that fold, and that pins on half of the CA hinge, and so you're kind of forcing half to go into both surfaces. So here is a, always a fun trick to kind of get those in there. But now you're in, and so you always want to check left to right to make sure that that's uh, centered and you have the throw that you need. And then you can go ahead and take those three pins out. And then I usually usually have like a 16th there. I usually push that in and then double check. Okay, am I gonna have enough throw? Looks good. And so here we're gonna get the um, thin CA with another tip. And if you guys notice, I did, I did a bad job putting that tip on there and you can't see it in here, uh, but uh, I dripped some on the wing. Uh, but what we're doing is putting one to two drops on each hinge. And I'm not going to fold it over because it was kind of awkward for filming, but you would also do the same, what you just saw, one to two drops on the other side of the same hinges, all three hinges. And there I go, wiping it off. So there you go, guys. Thanks for uh, watching the ailerons and the flaps and the servos. Next episode, we will be doing the landing gear. Mechanical landing gear might be complicated, might not be. Uh, We'll do it together. I'm gonna get going on the first wing and then I'll film myself doing it on the next one. So thanks for tuning in and we will see you guys uh, in a few days.